Thank you, Jesus.
you can twist your candles to turn off and you may be seated. That's awesome. Oh, goodness. Well, welcome and Merry Christmas. Aren't you glad to be in the house of the Lord tonight? Welcome. We're so glad that you're here. If, our, if you're our guest, uh, we're so grateful that you chose to be with us tonight. We know that a lot of other places, but thank you for joining with us tonight. If you'd like to give us your information, that's great. There's care cards and the seat back pockets in front of you. Just fill it out, drop it in the offering boxes on your way out or hand it to me if you want to. And uh, otherwise, there's also an opportunity for you to put a prayer request on there. We, as a church family, we pray over the needs that come into the church. And if... Um, you'd like that to be included on an email that we send out uh, we've got that as an option if you want it to just be a confidential prayer request between you and me we'll uh we'll keep it confidential and won't put it on the email but just be sure to send or give that to us all right we want to pray for you believe god for you you know in fact let's take a moment right now and let's just pray for whatever needs might be in the house some of you may be going through a difficult time maybe you came by faith tonight Maybe you came hoping for a Christmas miracle in your life. Maybe you're hurting. Maybe you're going through a difficult time of loss, struggle. Maybe it's a health issue. Some of you facing financial issues. Things may have happened at work at the end of the year. I don't know. But I do know there is someone bigger than you that cares about it. There is somebody big, bigger than you that knows about it. He cares about what's going on in your life. And I want to pray with you right now before we move forward. And let's thank him for what he did for us 2,000 years ago. If, Jesus, if God came as a baby, then he can certainly come and do something in your life today. Don't you believe that? Have faith. Ask him. Believe in him right now. Father, thank you for what you're, you've done for us. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to be born, to grow up to communicate to us, to show us what you're really like, that you're a God of love, patience, peace, and joy, and healing. Thank you for the life that you lived here, Jesus. We have so much documentation about your life to know who you are, what you like, and what you don't like. And we thank you that you've told us, and you've communicated to us, and you came and lived among us. And so tonight, God, in this room right now and online, there are people that are struggling maybe in something in their life and they've come looking for some hope. And like that bright star shined, showing the way to the, the birth of Christ, God, I pray that you'd shine in their hearts tonight. Let there be peace, healing, strength. God, let faith rise inside of them. That as we move into a new year, Father, that the new year is going to be worth living. That, God, they can make it. They can do all things through Christ who will give them strength. As we pray tonight, that you would just fill their heart with faith and hope and peace. That everything is going to be okay because of the baby. Because Jesus came and you care. Thank you, Father. Thank you for hope in Jesus' name. So at the conclusion, um, just a little bit, before we sing the last song, after I'm going to give a short sermon, and, and uh, then we're going to take communion. And in this house, communion is available for anybody and everybody that says Jesus is their Lord and Savior. If you believe in Christ and you've accepted him into your life, then you're a brother and sister of ours. Amen? Uh, so we have open communion. You're welcome to join us, and I'll give you some instructions for that in just a little bit. So I want to talk to you just for a few minutes about the Christmas story. Read from Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 12. If you want to go home and read it to your family, Luke chapter 2 is where it's found. It says, And there were angels living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. There were shepherds living in the fields nearby. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths, lying in a manger. Now this was 
a fulfilled prophecy from hundreds of years ago. And we have documentation that was found in the 1940s that predates the birth of Christ. It says the words from Isaiah where this was prophesied that in the town of Bethlehem, a Savior would be born. How many of you know that's where Jesus was born? He fulfilled prophecy. Did you know Jesus fulfilled more than 300 prophecies that were made more than 700 years and written down more than 700 years before he was even born? He is the Messiah. Nobody could manufacture that. Nobody could make that up. So the true story of Christmas is about a powerful, beautiful, wealthy, wise, the absolute wisest beings in all of the universe coming down and saying, I will become the most vulnerable human possible. And I will become a baby that will be hunted. I'm God. And I will live because my creation will take care of me. My creation will protect me. My creation will watch over me, will feed me. And for the first time in God's life, he felt his creation hug him, coddle him, love him, and adore him. And the reason he came as a baby was to bring the purpose in your life that he brought. And that is the greatest purpose that you could ever live out is to love him. God became a baby so that you would love him. For him to know what it feels like to be loved by you. And while humans fight to attain and keep their thrones, God gave his up and said, I want to be loved. I want to be loved. Jesus, the creator, placed himself in the arms of his creation to be held, coddled, fed, kissed, cleaned. And eventually, he wanted to be heard. He wanted his voice to be heard. This is who I am. This is what I like and this is what I don't like. Let me be a part of your life. And the scripture says, this is so awesome. It said the glory of the Lord shined around them. Do you know what the glory of the Lord is? Have you ever thought about that? Remember the angel was there and the glory of the Lord shined, about, shined around them. The glory of the Lord is God the Father. And so God the Father was so excited about what was happening that night. He showed up in the field and made this huge, great display. It was an absolute heavenly display right there in that field. Absolutely amazing. A huge performance for just these shepherds. And God the Father showed up. The glory of the Lord shined around. Him. And for God, the all-knowing, the all-powerful, the all-loving God, this was something new. This had never happened before even for him. He saw his son be held and loved and cared for. You see, God knew what it was to, to love and not be loved back. He wanted to be loved. God knew what it felt like to do and do and do for people and to never have them do for him. God knew what it was like to serve and to be served by angels that were forced to serve him. But now he was to be served by people who would love him. People who would think of him. This was something different. And God invites you tonight to love him. And that's what this is all about. It's not about a religion. It's not about a denomination. It's about you and me coming together and saying, Jesus, you are our Lord. We love you. Jesus, I want to get to know who you are, what you like and what you don't like. And I want to accommodate for you living in my life. I want to honor and I want to respect you with my life. And I invite you into my life and I want to love you. That's what God's after. You say, well, John, I've done too many things wrong. I've messed up so much. You don't understand. I've got this addiction. I've got this problem. And I say to you, he wants you to love him. He still wants you. Do you believe that? He still wants you. And the more you love him, the more he sets you free, the more that he helps you, the more he will encourage you and heal you. So let's pray. Would you bow your heads? Have you loved God?
have you said, God, I want to get to know who you are. I want to know what you like. God, I want to get to know what you don't like. And I want to accommodate you for you in my life. I want to live the rest of my life for you. God, I want to know you. And I thank you, Jesus, for what you did for me. Come into my life. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for washing me. What you did on the cross. Now, God, I thank you that I can come into a relationship with you. I honor you, Jesus, for what you did for me 2,000 years ago. And I thank you for loving me. In Jesus' name. Amen. In the back of your seat, on the holders, there should be some communion. A little cup that looks like this. If you didn't find it, if you need an extra one, just raise your hand. We've got people helping you out. We need a couple up here, guys. back the lid, the top that is where the bread is, the very top layer. The scripture says that on the night Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he gave thanks for it. He shared it with his betrayer. He shared it with someone who would deny him that night. But he also shared it with a group of guys. It was a group of guys that would die for him one day. And those men later that night would be scared half to death because of what was happening. There Jesus was being arrested. And he would be crucified in the morning. And Jesus knew very well when he took this bread and he broke it. He said, this is my body which is broken for you. Would you break it with me? And then he gave thanks for it. Let's give thanks. Lord Jesus, we thank you for what you did for us. Thank you for your body which was broken for us. Tonight, we don't just remember that you were born, but even more importantly, we remember that you died for us and that you were raised to life. And that's why we believe. Because you have power over death. And we thank you that you give that to us. Thank you for the bread. Thank you for your body, which was broken for us, for our healing, physically and spiritually. We thank you. In Jesus' name, would you take the bread? Thank you, Jesus. If you peel back the juice cup. Scripture says, in the same manner, he took the cup and he said, this is my blood, which is spilled for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Aren't you grateful for that? He forgave you for all of your sin. Now understand, when Jesus died on the cross, he paid the price for all of the sin of all of mankind, past, present, and future. Whereas salvation is no longer about whether your sins are forgiven or not. Now salvation is about whether or not you love Him. A relationship with Him. You get to know Him. What He likes, what He doesn't like, and accommodate for Him. And aren't you grateful that our sin has been paid for? Now that doesn't mean we get to go out and do whatever we want. We do our best to love him and to love each other and to care for one another. And 
We don't walk around pointing fingers at each other and acting all religious. But instead, we get to love and we get to take care of one another because this blood paid the price for all of your sin. You are legally, legally taken care of before God. And now God gets to say, all right, do you want to know me? And so, Father, thank you so much for your son. And Jesus, we thank you so much for your blood. You paid the price for us. You washed us. You cleansed us so that we would be made righteous. And God, we take advantage of that tonight by having a relationship with you. And we, we're so grateful for that. Thank you. Thank you for this blood which was spilled for us and all of the world. And thank you for tonight. And God, we're remembering that what you did for us 2,000 years ago was so important, but the best is yet to come. In so doing this, we also declare that you are coming back and we believe you. And you have prepared a home for us, a place for us, where you will wipe away all of our tears. There will be no more sickness. There will be no more death. God, we thank you for what you did for us. We thank you that we get to be a part of your kingdom. And you've prepared a place for us. In Jesus' name, would you drink together? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He loves you. Do you believe it? Come on, he loves you. Do you believe it? He loves you so much. Love him back. Amen. Where's our kids? Is Santa Claus coming tonight? Yeah? All right. It's going to be awesome, isn't it? Yeah. Well, God knows where each and every one of you are tonight. Let's love him. And so we're going to conclude with a song, and then I'll conclude with a prayer, all right? Would you stand, and let's go ahead and light our candles again.
to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. clap if you need to or want to. Either do it or don't, right? It's Christmas. Yeah. You guys ready to celebrate? Yes. All right. Father, we commit ourselves to you. And as we walk out of these doors to go and visit with family and friends, thank you for your protection and peace. And I pray, Father, that we would be the ones at the table with the greatest peace, hope, strength, encouragement for all of our family members. God, that all of our trials and tribulations we know are for your glory and that, God, you're taking care of us. And so, God, we trust all of these things, all of our needs into your hands of care. I pray for your blessings upon each of them as they go tonight. Watch over them, protect them as they travel. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Bless our homes, our families, our children, our finances, and all that we need. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. 